Today is New Medal Day. Everyone loves New Medal Day. So this is Land's End to John O'Groats virtual race that I did recently. And if you haven't seen the video, check it out. But basically you remember that I, I started and I was, I was hobbled before I even got going. And one thing that I've got really good at over the years is, is turning myself around when I've got an injury, something, an ache pain or whatever it is, just going on. I've just become really good at sort of turning myself around and being able to crack on with the race despite these aches and pains. So today what I want to do is I want to share with you some of the tricks and, and, and tips that I've developed over the years to really, really turn yourself around and get yourself onto the start line, through the race and eventually to the end when you've got those little bits of aches and pains. Fundamentally what I'm talking about is, is promoting healing. A biomechanic once said to me that um, <clears throat> the way my legs are, if I was a horse, they'd put me down. Oh. Injuries and running, they go pretty much hand in hand, like chafing and nipple rubbing. It's just one of those things that you get when you're a runner. And, and I've had more than my fair share. I'm not an expert, I'm not a therapist of, of, of any kind, but these are some of the things that's really worked for me and I just hope that they will help you out as well. I kind of want to use this, this ribbon, it's like a medal, it's a ribbon off a, some kind of medal, as like what I see happening in, in the muscles and what have you. Now, um, you know, when we talk about like developing knots and, and muscles shortening and all this kind of stuff, the way that I kind of explain it best is when you're moving and you're running and you're exercising, these muscle fibers are really rubbing together and it's generating heat. Now in time, those muscle fibers, especially if they go sort of unstretched or not stretched enough or you don't do any kind of injury prevention or recovery promotion, they can become kind of tacked together like a knot like that and obviously that ribbon now is that little bit shorter and it leaves us susceptible to injury and, uh, and pain and aches and all this kind of stuff. So what in effect we want to do is just break those muscle fibers apart and quite often this is kind of what's going on. Now there is obviously other aches, pains, strains, problems that you can develop but I want you to kind of think about like how has the injury come about? Like is it, a, was there a point in which something happened? You know, did you like, well, was you running along and you suddenly got a sharp pain? Well, that, that suggests like a strain or a sprain or something like that. Now, you know, that's, that's a different video that we're talking about. What we're talking about, these like dull aches and problems that just sort of develop over time. Or it might be something that you've had for quite a while that you've just never really been able to shake off or that it needs constant effort just to try and work it out. Like a little bit of tendonitis, a bit of a, a, bit of a sprain or, you know, just something that needs that little bit of, of constant work to, to get it into a state where you're comfortable running. For me to run like pain free, it's a very, very rare thing. But, you know, with these little techniques and that, I can definitely make it much, much better. So a few things that I do to aid my recovery and speed up healing. For the purpose of this video, I'll class them into a couple of different types. One is, is, is active, stuff that we're actively gonna do. Put time aside a few times a day. And some are passive. These are things that we, you can just do as like concurrent activity or multitasking whilst you're watching TV and all that kind of stuff, okay? So one of the first things, the go-to things that I, that I do is, is always get some compression. And now I know a lot of people talk about get some compression on and all this, and they might put some tube grip or a bandage around, okay? Now I do things really different and, and the way that I kind of look at it is like instead of just doing like a little bit of compression and leaving it on a long time do a lot of compression and leave it on for a short time so what I will do in my little torture cupboard here is I will use these resistance bands okay or voodoo straps voodoo floss whatever you call it lots of different types lots of different strengths okay and I will literally get this on to whatever's aching or whatever's hurting to, to literally cut off the blood supply. Now, my idea is that I want to get as much of the toxins and crap out of there as I can. I want to pause the blood for a little bit and then I want to flood the area with fresh oxygenated blood that's bringing all the goodness that's going to speed up recovery, okay? So that's primarily what I use this stuff for. And what I will do is, okay, I will put this on a couple of times an hour for about 10 to 15 seconds until like my, my foot is like, whoa, 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 like just throbbing 
you know, and then and then after that, I'll uh, I'll release it, and you just feel the blood flush in. Okay, I just love flushing it through, and, and it definitely seems to help. Sometimes you can have an area where your skin is just tacked against the muscle, you know, through heat and friction. Okay, it just gets a little bit sticky. Now, one way that you can get rid of that is again, you get some compression on with one of these things, and then you move the joint in a way where you're forcing the the skin and muscles to kind of to move apart you know and, uh, and you know like a like flossing almost imagine if you was like kind of flossing you know flossing the tooth flossing dancing whatever okay you're kind of flossing the muscle um to get that skin detached from from the muscle fibers and the fascia okay which is like the outer layer of the muscle i'll also use like a hockey ball or this little massage device where if i've got a tender spot where it's just really tight and painful again i'll try and do a similar thing but in a more targeted place where i'm really trying to get some pressure on there to just completely cut off the blood supply just let them nerves and everything just calm down a little bit okay and then flood the area with fresh blood and goodness and all this kind of stuff so there's a couple of things that i use for compression there so the next thing i want to talk about is massage now you can sit there with your hands all day long trying to get your thumbs in okay but one thing that really does help speed things up is is a massage gun okay uh, this is one from from every fun uh, and these are absolutely brilliant i'm sure you've used massage guns before i love this one one it's just a little bit but less bulky than other models but also it's just really really quiet so if i get this thing going like like when you're on your zoom call it doesn't sound like there's something strange going on, you know, whilst you're on the Zoom call. You can't really hear it, and I love the fact that it's a little bit quieter. So when I'm watching TV and I can be massaging and all that kind of stuff, then, um, you know, it, it's, it's a lot quieter. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I love this one, as well as loads of other reasons for this particular model. I'm going to do a, a separate review on this completely, but this really is... Um, a great tool. I use the head slightly different way. This one I kind of use as like a general mobility warm up type thing where I'm turning on some of the some of the muscle groups and, and the nerves. So I'll do it on the glutes, especially the hamstrings, you know, muscle groups that tend to just, you know, take a bit of time to waken up. And I'll use this little head, which I like to call Pinocchio's nose, when I've got some kind of muscle ache or problem. So I'll get this head on there. And then the idea is what I try and do is I try and get this sort of deep into the muscle, up under the muscle, again, just to try and break those muscle fibers up and, and get them detached. One of the key bits of this, I think is like, it's really easy just to whack it on the top setting. But all that seems to happen there is you just kind of bounce off the bone or whatever, but I kind of set it quite often just on the lowest setting. And just try and go that little bit deeper. And like I said, just try and get underneath the muscles and split the muscles you know think about the way that the muscle is laid out the calf has got two heads there so i'm trying to get up through the middle of there and underneath to get the soleus especially if you do a lot of long distance stuff because your soleus will do more work and your real long slow steady stuff than it will than your calf will okay so you really need to kind of work on that the key to this is you've got to think about how far out you are from the race because you don't want to be doing a load of deep tissue stuff with this or in fact any kind of deep tissue work if you're if you're you know a day or so away from your race because you, you're just you're not going to be recovered in time um in order to do your race but you know if you're if you've got two or three days like i had a couple of days before i did the uh, the 100k race I got really deep, you know, and, and yeah, it caused a little bit of bruising and all that kind of stuff, but it really did help promote healing. So this, this is a massive thing for getting blood flowing, you know, detaching those muscle fibers. Another thing that I'll do, okay, is um, I don't necessarily use ice so much, but what I do will do is I'll fill a large bin full of cold water, I'll leave it outside, and then again, it's similar to the compression thing, I wanna, I wanna get as much blood away from the injured area as I can, all right? So the way that I'll do that is I will submerge my limb, usually, uh, for 10 to 15 seconds, force the blood away, you know, take, my leg out and then just let the blood come back you know and i'll do that once or twice an hour I don't really do a great deal of the old ice unless it's a fresh injury it's a fresh injury 
then I will, you know, perhaps put a bit of ice on there just to uh, just to help with the swelling. These long-term aches and pains, it's never really worked for me. Okay, a couple of passive stuff that I would use. Elevation is one. If I'm on a multi-day race, I get my backpack and sort of elevate my feet, and it just helps with the ache and pain. It doesn't necessarily help you recover from an injury and what have you. It just means that, you know, when you've been on your feet all day and they're pretty battered, it really just, just help just calm them down a little bit. One thing I'll do if, if I'm at home is I'll put, um, you know, I've tried, I used to put my pillow under my foot and all this and eventually just kick it off the bed. So the best thing to do is just lift your mass mattress a little bit and just stick a pillow under your mattress. And also, if I'm sat watching TV, like I'm watching the rugby or something like that, then I'll kind of shimmy around in my uh, in my favourite chair, sort of elevate the feet a little bit. You might as well, something passive whilst you're watching telly. And again, that just helps sort of bring down the swelling. And mainly it's for the, it's for the aches and pains from the time on the feet that, that I do that for, rather than any kind of recovery or, or heat, promoting any healing of any kind of injury. Or. A couple of things that I'll do as well, regards to um, you know the, the passive stuff is I have a like a stretch boot, all right, which um, I quite often you know I put that on whilst I'm watching TV or whatever, or even just sat at my desk. I stood at my desk, I put this on, and it's just got like a, a passive stretch on my Achilles, which I always kind of suffer with. Um, whilst I'm sort of sat doing nothing, okay, and it just does it get it gets to the point where you know we can stretch it and then obviously relax, so it's not under tension anymore. Using this boot with lots of Velcro straps and all that, um, so that's that's a good little thing that'll do. I'll also have this little balance board. So if I'm using my stand-up desk, I'll have this balance board so I can get a stretch on my Achilles whilst I'm sat at the desk and there was a time when you know whenever I was like running or or hiking uphill like I could I couldn't get my heel down because there just weren't enough flexibility in my calves and my soleus. Now I can, you know I find if I'm going up even quite a steep hill I can get my heel down now so it's a lot more comfortable and there's less strain on my Achilles and my soleus. So um, so it definitely does work. And then the final thing that I want to talk about is you know a good therapist that's willing to kind of get stuck in and do the hard stuff for you, you know, almost making you scream and grip the head uh, is absolutely worth the wait in gold. You don't want someone who's reckless, obviously you want someone that's, that's knowledgeable and they know what they're doing, uh, but definitely someone that can, that can get, get stuck in, all right? And, uh, and they understand the difference between, you know, because you get some therapists and they're like, oh no, you might want to think about taking it easy. Listen, I've got a 100 kilometer race coming up, I'm not gonna be taking it easy. I need you to get me through the race. Uh, I don't want you to sit me down with, with, with kid gloves and whatever that saying is, you know, wrap me in cotton wool and, and tell me, you know, to take it easy and, and rest for the next three months. I need you to get me to a point where, where I can take this on. And, and I think there's a big difference between like a therapist and who, who, who like wants to make you feel good and is a little bit nervous of all that and somebody you understand like someone with a sporting background rugby you know rugby physio is absolutely bang on because they know you're going to run in pain and know you're going to run injured so now it's a case of just doing the best you can to keep you in the race okay so that's a couple of things that i wanted to share with you i hope you found it of, uh, of benefit i use these things usually before every race like i said i am I am that, that injured guy usually, especially the, the calves, Achilles and all that kind of stuff. So I'll do some, if you want, I'll do some separate videos on some of these uh, individual bits of kit. I'm definitely gonna do one on the massage gun because that has been really, really key in the stuff that I've done recently. So until the next video, take care.